اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاقتب من لسانی افقه قولی السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Welcome to the class everybody Welcome to the class again Welcome to the class I hope you're all okay um, Had a good you know, day yesterday And managed to cover uh, the stuff we did in the class um, so inshallah today is a is a is a new topic of course a bit of practice and then a, a, a quick review of what we did last time but then a new topic today we are going to do pointers yay so pointers inshallah will start i'm not sure if we're going to be able to cover the pointers all through this time in the class but we'll definitely start the pointers today and inshallah let's see where how far we go with the pointers so pointers is is an interesting topic and, and and an important topic as well so uh inshallah uh as soon as we start the class we'll do the quick review of what we have done last time and and, and jump into the pointers if you have any questions please do put in the in the in the, in the chat box so i have the chat box in front of me and i can see it so if you have any questions please do put that in the chat box and you will be fine. Inshallah, we'll try to answer that as much as we can, okay? Um, so I hope you managed to do the exercise uh, that, I, that I requested you to uh, take a look at. So if you have done it, that would be great. I think that will really help. Uh, going forward, things will become more and more interesting. Um, and I also hope the pace of the class is fine. Um, Especially given the fact that you have access to the recordings, you can always go back and inshallah, view the lectures. So, great, excellent. So what we'll do now is um, just um, start the class and uh, do a quick review of what we have done last time. Uh, I will quickly construct this uh, Harf of Jab table, and then I will quickly construct the Harf of Nasib table. We'll jump into the Harf of Nasab exercise a little bit here and there to so see if there is any confusion, if there is any uh, that you may have, and I'll try to answer that. And I really want to start with the topic of pointers today. Um, it's an important topic, so we want to start it today, inshallah. Okay? So uh, hopefully we're good. Um, so let me share my screen with you, as always. So, so you should be able to see my screen in a minute. Wait a second. Give me a second. I hope we won't see any technical glitches today. So, wait a second. So you should be able to see in a few seconds uh, because I can, I can almost see my screen. So uh, you should be able to see it now. Yes, the screen should be visible to, to you. So quick revision, quick review. Quick review. What we have done so far is the half of Jab and half of Nasab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct directly the half of Jab chart first. I'm going to construct the half of Jab chart first. So we are all perfectly comfortable with this, okay? Our from third chart. So uh, I'm gonna quickly do this um, and uh, let me know if you have any confusion whatsoever on this, okay? Because I want this to be on your fingertips by now, inshallah. So is ba, let me just write them down first, then we write them in ba, ta, kaf, lam, wow. Ba, ta, kaf, lam, wow. And we had min, fi, an, min, fi, an. And we had ala, hatta, hatta. And then we had ila. Ala, hatta, ila. So if there's any confusion on this, please tell me. Okay. So let's do the meanings. Ba was with, 
Ta was swear by Allah only. Okay, by Allah only. Kaf was like. Lam was for or have. Okay. And Wa was oath. Then we had Min. Min was from. He was in or about. In or about. Okay. An was used in three meanings. Um, not not three meaning two meanings. About or away from. Away from. Okay. Allah was used in three, three meanings. On or upon. Or against. Depending upon the context. And then we have Hatta. Hatta was until. Okay. Ila was two words. Okay. Ila was two words. Okay. Good. So if you're on the line, if you're if you're watching this, it will be good to drop us a quick message so I know. Um, so uh, just drop a quick message so I know. Inshallah. Uh, but if you're not on the line, you're watching recording, that's also fine. It's it's just fine. Okay, so this is the half of dirt chart, inshallah. Okay, this is what we did, and I hope that this is clear to you. And the concept is clear to you of Harf of Jar as well. I don't want to reiterate it again and again. So we did it in two lectures quite comprehensively, inshallah. So if you still have problems, I advise you to go back to the lectures and listen to the lectures. And if you still encounter problems, then please uh, tell me and I will try to do an extra session on this uh, if, if, if there's a need. <laughs> okay. Then last time we did Harf of Nasab chart. We did the half of Nasab chart. Now, on the half of Nasab chart, we did, we did inna, oops, we did inna, inna, and what I said, you just make it opposite then, uh, in, instead of inna, you just say anna, and you pick up anna, and you add a calf to it, okay? The anna, inna anna ka anna. Anna, and then you pick up Anna again and you add the bar to it, right? Bar to it. The Anna. But this time it's a kasra, right? The Anna. Inna Anna ka Anna bi Anna. Then there was later. Then there was later. La Kinna. Okay. And you had La Kinna. And then we had La Allah. La Allah. Inna anna ka anna bi anna later la kinna la anna inshallah. Okay. For each of these, we did the meanings, of course. Uh, we said inna is certainly or for sure in that sense. Anna is that. That it's not a point to that; it's a connect to that. Okay. Ka anna ka anna. Anna meant as though, as if, as though, as if, as though, as if, in that, in that sense, okay? The Anna we said is because, because it starts with a B, right? That's how we remembered it. The Anna is because. Later was an expression of extreme regret, okay? We translated it as alas, and we said it's an expression of regret, okay? Expression of extreme regret, right? La kinna is however, however, and la Allah is la Allah is so that hopefully, maybe, perhaps, and the same similar meanings. Okay, that's la Allah. Okay. For the half of nasab, we did few pointers as well. We did few tips. We said half of nasab, half of nasab can tolerate give it some space. Half of nasab can tolerate the long distance relationship. The long distance relationship. Okay. This is what we said. The half of nasab can tolerate the long distance relationship unlike the half of jar half of jar does not tolerate long distance relationship okay but half of nasab can 
Okay, so this is what we did last time. And of course, her form nasab makes the ism, makes its ism nasab. That's the purpose of her form nasab, right? Okay. Okay. And that was it. And then we jumped into the practice and then we did some practice, right? So we have done so far, how, how, what we have done so far, we have done uh, so, some fragments. We have done Mosuf Sifa today, uh, this up to now. We have done Idafa up to now. We have done Harf of Jar and we have done Harf of Nasib. We have also done the pronouns, right? So today we are going to do, do the last fragment out of the list that we had, five fragments that we had. So we have done four of them already, and now today we're going to start the ism ishara, ishara uh, the pointer fragments. Okay. So after that, once we have done these five fragments, we will move into the more wider sentence structures of the Arabic language, and then we'll apply all of this knowledge together onto the Quran, where we will start to do, do the Arabs of the Quran, inshallah. Uh, so that will become, make it very, very interesting. Okay, inshallah, very interesting. Walaikum salam Imran. Thank you for joining. Okay. All right. Good. So let me let me jump on to the let me jump on to the exercise. So just so you just just to make sure that you are you're okay with what you have what we have learned so far. Just to make sure that you are okay what we have learned so far. I will do few. I will do few. And then we'll move forward, inshallah. If you have if if there's some specific one that's troubling you. Please do tell me, and we'll touch upon it. But uh, my 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 hope is that you were able to do it uh, because that's not really too difficult. Let's see, let's see, inshallah. Let me let me move on to this exercise. Let me move on to this exercise. Okay. So, on page number twenty-eight of your exercise book. So what we have what we have here, what we have here, is Anna lahum ajran. Anna lahum ajran. Okay. Anna lahum ajran. So what I'm looking at here. So I'm looking at how many words I'm looking at. I'm looking at the Anna. Okay. I'm looking at the Anna. I'm looking at Lam, which is a harf of Jar Lam. Then we have, I'm looking at the Hum, which is the attached pronoun. And then I'm looking at the Ajran, right? Ajran, correct, correct, very good. Yes, there are four words, one, two, three, four, four words. So the yellow part is, this yellow part is the Harf of Jar fragment. This is Harf of Jar fragment, fragment. okay? Harf of Jar, oops, Harf of Jar fragment, okay? And the, 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 the green part, the green part is the harf of nasab fragment. So we have anna, which is the harf of nasab, and its ism is at a distance. Its ism is at a distance. So this one is harf of nasab fragment. Okay. So because they can tolerate the distance, they can tolerate the distance. Okay. Um, let's look at the number two. In the number two, in the number two, we're looking at inna hum. We're looking at inna hum, which is inna and hum, one word and two word, and then fitiyatun is the third word. Okay, so in this case, in this case, we have inna hum as a harf of nasab fragment. It's a harf of nasab fragment. Okay, because we have inna and hum is an attached pronoun, right? So in this case, this whom is nasab. It's not jar, okay? It's it's not nasab. Number three. Innaha alayhim. Innaha alayhim. Innaha alayhim. So what's happening here? So this is. These are how many words? These are how many words? These are one, which is inna. 
ha attached form of the pronoun here which is to alay alay is a harf of jar alay is a harf of jar it's like alaykum remember ala hatta ila that that harf of jar now because it's used with a pronoun it is using this it is using this two dot form right two dot form so it's a third word and then there's a fourth word so the green part is the harf of nasab and let's say the yellow part is the harf of jar it's the harf of jar this is harf of nasab and this is harf of jar okay two fragments two fragments here good Okay. Now, what's happening here in number four? Inna ilayna ayabahum. What's happening here? Can you help me out here? So, in, in, in here, we have certainly something which is looking like a half of Nasa. Inna. It's a half of nasa, correct. And they are probably how many words? One word is inna. The second word is which one? Alaina. Search. And then we have three words is na, which is the attached pronoun. Then you have you have iaba. Then you have iaba as the fourth word. And then whom as the fifth word. Good. Excellent. So how many fragments? How many fragments are operating here? Let's find out how many fragments are operating here. Okay, let's find out how many fragments are operating here. Okay. So the first fragment I can I can check, I can see is I can I can completely see Elena. I can see Elena, which is because because this is Elay, this is Elay, right? This is Elay, which is half of Nasab, and I can I can I can map it to half of Nasab. Okay, this is the first fragment, which is a half of Nasab fragment. Okay, this is half of Nasab fragment. So uh, Inna and Elena. Are you saying, Imran, there is a relationship between Inna and Elena, or are you considering them them as a complete separate? Iyabahum, yes, Iyabahum is there as well. That's true. Iyabahum, this Iyabahum is what? What fragment is it? Iyabahum is Idafa, right? It's an Idafa fragment. Iyaba is light, no al, and it's followed by jar, which is the attached pronoun. Okay. Elena is a harf of harf of nasab fragment. Elena is a harf of nasab fragment. This Elena is what we know as Ila. Right? This is what we know as ila. Right? And we said when it's attached to a pronoun, it will give you this two dot form. Right? So this, this is the harf of nasa fragment. And iyabahum is a is a idafa with a pronoun. It's an idafa with a pronoun. But where is the ism of inna? Inna is also a harf of nasa. Where is the ism of inna? Is inna must have an ism. Which ism is it? Which ism is it for inna? So inna, as soon as you see a half of nasab, you should have an ism somewhere which is in nasab. That is related to inna. Okay? And that's what we have to find. You won't see half of nasabs without isms in nasab. Okay? So the, it must have an ism in nasab. So if you look closely, if you look closely, the is the ism, the ism iaba, the ism iaba is in nasab state, isn't it? Although it's a part of ida, mudav, uh, it's it's a mudav, it's a mudav. 
this is effectively this is effectively the ism of inna this is effectively the ism of inna this ayabahum is ism of inna this ayabahum is an ism of inna okay so this is another half of nasab fragment because ayaba is in nasab okay so when you when you look at ayaba you say yes this ism is in nasab state fine um alaina already had the ism which is na so i cannot attach na to inna anymore because it's used that position is taken uh, alaina and na are already in a bond so i cannot disconnect that the only ism that is in nasab after it is iyaba so i can attach iyaba to inna however iyaba is also attached to whom right iyaba is also attached to whom so i cannot disconnect iyaba from whom what i would do i would take the whole bit i would take the whole bit i would take the whole bit and i will call this entire thing from here all the way to inna a half of nasab fragment i would call it uh, the entire thing a half of nasab fragment because ayaba is connected to whom okay because ayaba is connected to whom you cannot break the chain you cannot break the connection because the ayaba is connected to whom you take the full idafa fragment and you said and you connect it with inna and you call it the harf of nasab fragment okay okay good fala allaka baqiun nafsaka fala allaka baqiun nafsaka so here what's happening fa is one word it's a connector okay? it's a connector la alla is a harf of nasab we know right ka is an attached pronoun third word okay baqiun is another word which is fourth and nafsa is another word which is fifth and ka is another word which is sixth okay so there's so many words operating here there's so many words operating here Harf of nasab would be which one? Harf of nasab is la'allaka. This is harf of nasab. Harf of nasab. Okay? La'allaka with the attached pronoun. With the attached pronoun. Right? This is harf of nasab. Okay? There is another fragment operating here, which is nafsaka, right? This is nafsaka. This is an idafa fragment. Idafa. Is there is nothing special troubling you is there any any of these troubling you anything that you really want me to look at let me let me um, 19 what do you think about 19 what do you think about 19 Inna haza. Inna haza. Is this a half of Nasa fragment? Haza is a pointer word, if you remember. We have not done it. We've started today, inshallah. But when we did the flexibility, we said these are the pointer word. This is a pointer word. Yes. It means this. This. Right? And pointer words are normalisms, but they're inflexible. They don't show their status. 
the fact that it is used in front of inna tells you that this haza is in a substate. So the context is telling you, the context is telling you haza is in a would be a harf of nasab fragment. Okay. Nasab fragment. Okay. Let's do one last one and then we'll move on inshallah if unless there's there's something bothering you. Okay. In Namal Usri Yusra. Certainly, there is ease after difficulty. There is ease after difficulty. We recite this every day. In Namalus Yusra. This is a large promise. There is ease after difficulty. So if you're finding it difficult, there's ease in Chamba. Okay. So in Namalus Yusra. So how many fragments operating here? How many fragments operating here? And which ones? What do you think? This should be in this should be easy. Should be easy. There's Ma'alusri. Ma'alusri. This is this one is Idafa fragment. Yes. Idafa fragment. And this is a special mudaf. Special mudaf. Okay. This is, we have inna and its ism is at a distance, which is here, yusran, yusran, okay, yusran. Now this one is a half of nasab fragment. Good, excellent, 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 excellent. Very good, very good. So let's let's inshallah move on. If you have any specific one, please do tell me. I'll I'll solve it here. But let's move on to inshallah uh, the, the 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 lecture uh, of new topic, which is the which is the pointer fragments. Inshallah. Okay. So I'll move on to the next page. I'll move on to the next page. To we'll start with it. So we have done four fragments so far. Today, we are going to start the pointer fragments. Pointer fragments. Now, the pointer fragments is, is effectively based on the pointers, okay? They are pointing words. Okay. Uh, These words called, they're called Ismail Ishara. Ismail Ishara. Okay. Asma'ul Ishara. Oops. As Asma'ul Asma'ul Yes, Asma'ul so These fragments are based on the pointing words called Asma'ul Ishara. Okay? okay? Asma is a plural of isms. Okay? It's a plural of ism. Okay? So, these, these fragments are like, for example, let me give you some examples. So, for example, not in Arabic. Let's start with the English examples, inshallah, and then we'll move on to the 
uh, Arabic example, English examples. In English, what you say is this girl, for example, this girl. Okay, you would say, you would say those Muslims. You say that book, this house, okay? these uh, cars, and so on. All of this, what we have here is this. What are this, this, or those, or that? All of these things, these are ism isharas, these are pointing words, right? That you have in English. The pointing words, you have the same in Arabic language as well, and you call them. Asma'ul Ishara, the isms that are pointing, pointing words, the pointing isms, okay? But all of these sentences, all of these things that I've written, they're all fragments. They're all, of, they're all fragments, English fragment example. They're not sentences. They're not sentences. And they will be sentence if I say, this is, this is a girl, is a girl. This is a girl, or I would say, those are Muslims. Or, or I say, that is a book. Or this is a house. These are cars. Okay? If I, if I write these sentences like this, then they would be sentences, okay? But right now, the one above are not sentences. These are fragments. These are fragments, okay? Fragments. The fragments. Let's be clear on this. They're, not, they're less than a sentence. More, more. They're less than a sentence and more than a word. And then they are, these are sentences. The next ones that I've written. Okay, the sentences. There is a difference between fragment and a sentence. With the pointing words, you can construct either fragments or sentences, and we'll and we'll see the difference how they are done. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind that pointing words are normalisms, okay? They're normal inflexibilisms, okay? The pointing words are inflexible isms, okay? They're inflexible isms. Therefore, therefore, they have all the four properties. They have all the four properties, okay? They are, they are inflexibilisms and they have all the four properties. So, so we, we must be able to tell the status, number, gender, and type. Okay, status, number, gender, and type for all the pointer fragment, for all the pointer words in China. Okay? The gender and the type, the gender and the type is can be told based by the based on the meaning and the context they're used in. Okay? The gender and the type, you can tell them, sorry, not the gender and the type, I'm, I'm saying gender and type, it's gender and the number. Gender and the number, you can tell based on the context and also based on where they lie on the table. Just like we had singular pair plural, we'll have a table where we have a singular pointers, pair pointers, and the plural pointers. The genders can be told uh, by uh, context. For example, if I, start, if I write this girl or I write this boy, how would I tell the gender of this word this? I cannot tell the gender of this word this without having a word girl or a boy next to it, right? So the boy tells me this, this, this word this is a masculine. But in the first case, the girl tells me this pointer is a feminine, okay? So the gender sometimes requires this context, this meaning around it, so you can tell, okay? In some cases, it's clear as well. Okay. So we will, inshallah, do that. Uh, we will do the table of this pointing words, and I will help you out in understanding this table and, and remembering this table, inshallah, as, as we have been doing so far. And, um, and, and, and this will, inshallah, open up so much for you. So let me, let me go and construct this table. Let me copy one from the top. Let me copy one from here. So I don't have to do a lot of stuff. And bring it here. 
Okay, so take use the same table. I just delete this line for now. It sells entirely done. Okay. Good. So what we have, let's make some headings out of it. Let's make some headings out of it. Okay, so we have just like before, we have singular. We have singular, singular, and then we have pair, and then we have plural. Okay. Plural. But there's another thing here. I'll tell you in a bit, okay? I'll tell you in a bit, inshallah. So just bear with me, okay? And this is where, and then we have a masculine form. And we have masculine form of these pointers. We also have feminine form of these pointers. Feminine form of these pointers, okay? Feminine form of these pointers. Singular, pair, plural, masculine, feminine. Okay, and we're going to fill that in, inshallah. Okay, slowly, slowly, and inshallah, we'll get there. We'll get there, okay? Now, the first pointer that you already know is Haza. First pointer that you already know is Haza. Okay, first pointer is Haza. Haza is used for masculine only. It's not feminine, okay? It's not feminine. Haza. Haza means this. Haza means this, okay? This. So we want to understand this. Uh, Haza means this, okay? First pointer, okay? The opposite to Haza in feminine is Hazihi. Hazihi. Let me write it here. Hazihi. Hazihi. And what does Hazihi mean? It means this as well. But in this case, this is feminine, isn't it? In the Haza case, it's masculine. I don't like to write F because it's written in front of M. Okay. So you understand? So Haza and Hazihi. These are singular, masculine, and feminine form. Singular, masculine, and feminine form. Haza, hazihi. Haza, hazihi. Okay? Now, I'm going to part the pair for now, and I'm going to move on to plural. I'm going to move on to plural, because I want to make it easy for you to understand and remember. Okay? If you know these two, haza and hazihi, we can move on to plural, which you also know. You have heard this in the Quran. Okay. The plural is haulai. 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 Plural is haulai. If haza means this, what would plural mean? What would plural mean? Means these. These. Okay? Haulai means these. It's masculine. Haulai means these. Haza, haulai. Both masculine. First one is this, and the last one is these. Okay? In case of feminine, there's a good news. There's a good news. Because the plural of feminine is exactly the same as the plural of masculine. They both are haulai, so you don't need to remember both separately. You just can remember one. Haza is the masculine singular. Haulai is masculine plural. Hazihi, feminine singular. Haulai. Feminine, plural. They both are same. Okay? They both are same. No difference. No difference. Okay? Any confusion so far? 
Uh, give me one if you're okay. If you're okay with this. It's not it's not difficult. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, inshallah. It's nothing magic about this. So inshallah, we'll get there. Very good, Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Okay? Good. Now, if you remember, if you remember in the Muslim chart, we had Muslimun, Musliman, Muslimin, Muslimani, Muslimani. And in case of feminine chart, we have Muslimatani, right? The ending was Ani. The ending was Ani. So you will have the same ending here, okay? You will have the same ending here. You have, you have Hazani. Hazani. Okay. Azani mean these two, these both, or both of these. Both of these. Let me let me write these both. Oh, I'll write both of these because that makes more sense in English. Both of these. Both of these. Hazani. And in feminine, you know that we introduced a ta, just like Muslimani, we had Muslimatani. Here we, we, we're gonna have Hatani. Here we're gonna have Hatani. Hatani. Okay. Hatani. Okay. So in this case, it's gonna be both of these as well. Both of these as well. Okay. Haza hazani haulai, hazihi hatani haulai. Let's say it five times together, inshallah. Okay, let's say five times. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Haza hazani haulai, hazihi hatani haulai. Haza hazani haulai, hazihi hatani. Haulai Haza Hazani Haulai Hazihi Hatani Haulai Haza Hazani Haulai Hazihi Hatani Haulai One last time Haza Hazani Haulai Hazihi Hatani Okay. Good. Now I'm gonna give you more good good news. More good news. Okay. The more good news is now these all of these versions that you see here, all of them that you are looking at here. They are the Rafa forms. They are the Rafa forms. They're not Nasab or Jar forms. They are Rafa forms. Okay? All of these pointers are by default Rafa. Okay? Are by default Rafa. Unless there is a case to call them Nasab or Jar. For example, if they were if they come after a harf of Jar or if they come after a harf of Nasab, then they would be Nasab. The good news is, the good news is. The nasab form of haza is haza. It's the same. The nasab or jar form of haza is haza. It's the same. The nasab or jar form of haulai is also haulai. It's the same. There is no difference. There is no difference. Okay. The nasab or jar form of hazihi is also hazihi. There is no difference. They're exactly the same. And haulai is also haulai, exactly the same, no difference. So let me make these columns gray. I make them gray, so you can differentiate. Okay. So the ones in gray are rafa. The ones in white are either nasab or jar, either nasab or jar. Okay. Let me write them here. So this is masculine, this is Rafa, okay? This is Rafa forms. This, and the bottom here is Nasab or Jar. Nasab or Jar. 
That's a bojak. That's the same story here. Okay. In the feminine case. Okay. The gray ones are Rafa and the white ones are Nasaburja. The, the, the good news is if you just remember the, the Rafa, you have remembered, you have memorized the Nasaburja forms too. And the context is going to tell you what they are in terms of their status. Okay? The context is going to tell you that, inshallah. Okay? So nothing to worry about. Now, just like we drove, we derived the Hazani and Hatani for pair. We mapped it to the Muslim chart just to for the sake of remembrance. We said in the Muslim chart, we had Ani ending for pair and Tani ending for feminine. In the same case, the Nasab or Jar ending in the Muslim chart were what? Muslimaini, wasn't it? Was Muslimaini ending. So we give it the same ending. We say Hazaini. Say Hazaini. Okay? Hazaini. Okay? Hazaini is the Nasaburjar form of Hazani. And you can probably tell me yourself. Hatani would have the Aini ending. So it's going to become. Atheni. Atheni. Okay. Atheni. Okay. Atheni. That's the Nasaburjar form. Nasaburjar form. Okay. So just if you just remember the Haza, Hazihi. And haulai, then you can derive the pair. From haza, you can make it hazani. From hazihi, you can make it hatani, because you know there's a tani ending. The nasab and jar form are same for the for the primary one, the singulars and the plurals. The pairs, it's it's a bit different, but it's the same ending as the Muslim chart, any ending. Okay, so nothing nothing too special here. Nothing too special here. Okay. Now, if you're good with this, can I move forward? Can I? Can you give me another one if you're good with this? Can I move forward? Any questions so far? Anything confusing? Should, should be pretty simple, inshallah. Nothing. Nothing magic here. Good. Excellent. So now these pointers that you have seen here, all of this, I mean, the pointer this or these, these pointers are not used to point to something which is far away, right? This or these in English even is used to point something which is close by, something which is near, not far away, okay? So if a car is just next to me, I'm, I'm going to say this car, this car. And if a car is too distant from me, it's far away from me, I'm not going to say this car. I'm going to say that car, okay, that car. The difference is the pointers that point to things which are near and the pointers that point to things which are far away. All of these pointers point to nearby things. These are for nearby things. Let me let me bring them here. Bring it here. So let me clarify this here. So these are pointers for near. These are pointers for near. Okay. The pointers for near. All of these are for near. Let me give it a different color so you remember. Orange, okay. These are for near, okay? Near. Any object which is near, you would use these pointers, okay? Not for far. The pointers for far are separate. They are different pointers. And they are easy as well, just like this one. Just like this one, they're easy. And you know them already, perhaps, okay? Just like this one. Now, I want to tell you another another thing. So I, I will take these pointers and I'll try to search the Quran with these pointers. So I can give you another another insight that I wanted to give. So let me pick Haza first. 
and I'll just go to this Sanjeev, Sanjeev and I'll search Haza randomly and you'll see loads of results. You'll see about 227 results in 29 ayahs here, okay? Then I change it to Hazihi, let's say. I change it to Hazihi. Hazihi. If I do, so do Hazihi, it's also quite widely used in the Quran, right? Hazihi is there as well, okay? What if I do Ha'ulai? Ha'ulai. So Ha'ulai is also quite widely used in the Quran, right? It's it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot used in the Quran. Ha'ulai. So Haza, Hazihi, and Ha'ulai is definitely I need to know. Then there's Hazani. And there's Hazani. Hazani, the pair form of masculine, is used just two times in the Quran. It's just used two times in the Quran. So you need to have this visibility, okay? This is important to know, yes? But it is just used very, very rarely in the Quran, okay? And in the rough form, what about the what about the nasab or jar form? Hazaini. Let's make it Hazaini. Hazaini is not even used. Hazaini is not even used in the Quran, okay? What about Hatani? The, the the feminine pair form hatan hatani is not used in the quran this is a this is another ism which is buhtan this is kind of uh, i think blame okay this is not the pointer okay hatani is not used in the quran okay just like that hatani is not used in the quran Okay, so what I'll do here, I'll just mark them red. So the, the ones which are red, the ones which are red are not used in the Quran. Okay, they're not used in the Quran. Azaini is not used in the Quran. Hazani is used, let me mark it, let's say amber. Okay, this is used in the Quran, yes, but just two times, just two times in the Quran. Okay, and all of these remaining are used quite widely in the Quran. So effectively, what you really need to understand and remember is Haza, Hazihi, Haulai. These three pointers you definitely need to have on your fingertips. Haza, Hazihi, and Haulai. And the good thing is the Nasab and Jar and Rafa all look the same. They're exactly the same. Okay. So you just need to memorize three pointers. Haza, hazihi, haulai. It's great if you memorize the full chart. Absolutely great. But from the Quranic perspective, the, these three ones are the most widely used. Hazani is just used two times. Okay. I recommend you to memorize the full chart so you have it on your fingertips. But when you do the Quran and the Arabs, you will not find hazani, hatani, or hataini. Okay, you would largely find Haza, Hazihi, and Haulai, and sometimes Hazan. Okay, just some insight. And remember, these pointers are for near. These pointers are for near. Okay. Good. So now, because we have done pointers which are for near, naturally, we need to do pointers which are for far. Which are for far. So let me just copy the same table and put it on the next page and make this table for the pointers which are far away, for far, for pointing at a distance. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. Now, this one is for far. That, for example, how, how would you say that in Arabic? That. That in Arabic is zalika. 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 There's a gem here, I'll tell you, inshallah. Zalika. Zalika means that. Okay. Zalika. The opposite to zalika in feminine, the opposite to zalika in feminine is. Tilka, you all also know this. You have read this in the Quran, right? Tilka. It's Tilka. 
Okay? That also means that. But feminine. Zalika and Tilka. Zalika means that. Zalikal kitabu la raibafi. Yes? Alif lam means Zalikal kitabu la raibafi. That is the book. There is no doubt about it. Okay? So Zalika and Tilka. You know this. You have read this quite a lot in the Quran. Okay? So we'll do the same approach. We'll go to the plurals first. Go to the plurals first. So let me make the masculine plural. You also know this one already. You also know this one. It's ulaika. It's ulaika. Okay? It's ulaika. Ulaika. Ulaika would mean those masculine. Ulaika would mean those masculine. Okay? Ulaika would mean those masculine. Okay? It's quite widely used as well. And we have uh, we have um, uh, read this in the Quran quite a lot. Ulaika hudam mir rabbihim, for example. Right? We read it quite a lot. Those. Those. And again, the same good news, the plural for feminine is exactly the same. Ula'ika, there's no difference. Just the same pattern like we had in the in the mirror case. Haza and we had Haza and Ha'ula'i. And then we had Hazihi and Ha'ula'i. In this case, we have Zalika, Ula'ika, and Tilka, Ula'ika. Okay? All right. For the pair, we use the same logic. For the pair, we use the same logic. Uh, last no, in this case we don't. Sorry, uh, the pair we won't use the same logic. Last time we we said it's ani ending, ani ending. It's not gonna be like this here. It's not gonna be hazani like. It's not gonna be zalikani. It's not gonna be that. Okay, it's different here. Okay, so in this case. The pair form is zanika. Instead of saying zalika, you say zanika. You add a noon to it. Okay? Add a noon to it. Zanika. Zanika. Okay? And in the case of feminine, you would say the same thing but starting with the ta because feminines love ta. Right? The ta is very, very feminine. So instead of saying za nika, you would say ta nika. Ta nika. Okay? Za nika or ta nika. Okay? Okay? It, they, they both would mean those, both, both, um, how should I say it in English? Those both. Say those. Both of those. Both of those. Both of those. Okay? Let's say it like that. Both of those. Sounds weird, but uh, both of those. Okay? Zalika, Zanika, Ulaika. Tilka. Ta nika ula ika. Okay? And again, all of these are rafa forms. All of these are rafa forms. Okay? Rafa forms. The same good news I can give you for the nasab and jar form. So zalika's nasab and jar form is zalika, no change. Tilka's nasab and jar form is tilka, no change. You don't need to memorize it separately. Okay. Ulaika is also no change. Same Nasaborger form in both cases, feminine and masculine. Okay. Feminine and masculine. Okay. Feminine and masculine. In case of pair, I'll give you I'll give you a trick. I'll give you a trick. What you do, you replace the alif 
after the zal and the ta. You replace the alif after the zal and the ta with a ya. You replace the alif with a ya. You say zainika. Say zainika. Zainika. And then you say tainika. Zainika and tainika. You replace the alif with a ya. You say zainika, tainika. Zainika, tainika. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same drill and search them in the Quran for you. Just to give you an insight of how widely they're used. All right? So I put zalika here. And you see there are 427 results. It's quite widely used in the Quran. Quite widely used in the Quran. Then you have this tilka. Tilka. Tilka has also quite good results, like 45 results. It's used quite a lot in the Quran too. Right? Then we have this ulaika. Okay? Ulaika. Ulaika. Oops, sorry. I did some spelling mistake. Yeah. There's a vowel here. Ulaika. Yep. So ulaika is quite a lot used as well. It's 206 results here, right? Quite a lot used in the Quran. Ulaika. Now, taking the pair form, let's take the zanika and tanika. Okay, I say zanika. Zanika. And it's just one usage in the Quran. Just one time usage in the Quran. One time usage. In the Quran, there's no further usage in the Quran. It's just one result, okay? One result, okay? So I'll say, I'll say, okay, one. I'll say one time in Quran. Let me write it here, okay? So one time in Quran. One time in Quran and Zalika and these Hazani was two times in Quran. times in Quran okay just so you have that then let's look at the tanika let's look at the tanika 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 is not used it's not used in the Quran right it's not used in the Quran how about the nasab and your form of zanika it says Zainika, we replace the Aleph with the Ya, Zainika. Zainika is also not used in the Quran. What about the Tainika? What about the Tainika? Tainika. This is this is this is not this is this is not the pointer. This is not a pointer. This is a different this is a different word. Okay, just like we had in the previous case as well. Is not a pointer, okay? It's not a pointer. It's a different word, okay? So even if you look look at the translation, it translates like, then we will surely bring you magic like it. So there is no pointing word used in the trans translation as well, right? It's a different word. It's a different word, okay? And it has a shadda on it. It has a shadda on it. Look closely. It has a shadda on it, right? So pointer word tanika does not have a shadda. It's a different word altogether. The tanika is not used. Or tainika is also not used in the Quran. So these three are not used in the Quran. These are red. Zanika is used once, so I'll make it amber. Okay, like this. Okay. All of the rest are quite widely used in the Quran. Okay, just so you have this visibility. It's better if you understand this chart fully. Okay. It's better if you can memorize this chart. I've given you this logic to memorize it. So effectively, if you can memorize, if you can memorize the haza, hazihi, and haulai, and zalika, tilka, and ulaika, then I think you're good. Then you're good. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll move on to the page number page number wait a second page number 30 of your exercise not exercise of your notes 
And we have all of this table here, this chart here, that we have just constructed, okay? So I would like you to spend a few minutes, one, one minute or so, or two minutes, just reciting this chart on your own, okay? Just try to familiarize yourself with this chart before we move forward, inshallah, okay? So I'll give you a minute or two to memorize it or try to recite it in your own time, and then we'll continue the class, inshallah. So please do that. All right. Okay. So I hope you got a chance to um, to just read through it. Uh, it may take some time to get engraved in your mind. Uh, that's fine. It's okay if you have to look at the table and then do it. It's absolutely fine, but it's not difficult. I've given you this logic. Inshallah, and this will help you. What you effectively need to really, really remember is the ha is the haza. Um, and let me just make it big. Haza, haulai, haulai, hazihi. Okay, that's what you need to. Rizalika, tilka, ulaika. Really, really remember. Okay, these are the most important ones. And then you have hazani. Use two times. Zanika used one time in the Quran okay all the rest all the rest uh, meaning when I say all the rest I really mean this this part uh, wait a sec I mean this part this part and this part okay these parts you don't have to you don't have to really worry about too much because they are already, they're not used in the Quran. They're not used in the Quran, but it's always better if you know. If you have memorized it, it's always better, okay? Because tomorrow, if you ever try to go advanced Arabic studies, then this will really help you, okay? From the Quranic perspective, they're not used, okay? So it's really up to you how you want to play this. And remember this part. Remember, remember the, the aspect of being near and being far remember this don't forget this okay so pointers are for near and far both okay excellent so what we need to do now is i'm going to i'm going to tell you how these pointers are used to construct fragments and sentences to construct fragments and sentences. These pointers can be used to construct either the sentences or the fragments. 
and we'll slightly see the difference between the two okay today so slightly see the difference between the two and i want you to pay a bit attention here okay so first what i'm telling you here, here is pointers pointers to construct two things two things number one fragments number two sentences okay two things fragments this is what pointers are used to construct okay so we're going to look at how they look like okay in both cases so let me part okay fragments with the pointers okay. fragments with the pointers are made just by following two rules they're just two rules to make fragments with pointers okay there are two rules to follow okay the two rules to follow rule number one rule number one why is it's so it's so distracting uh, let me let me just fix it so if I'm, uh, anyways forget it so I'll, I'll just use the bullets instead okay so rule number one the pointer pointer word must be followed by an alt the pointer must be followed by an alt okay if you oops, if you see if you see a pointer word and it is followed by an al it is followed by an al then it's highly likely that it is a pointer fragment i'll give you some examples in a bit okay that's rule number one as soon as the pointer word comes the next word after it will have an al on it will have an al on it okay rule number two the four properties of the pointer and the po word pointed at pointed at must match meaning meaning if the word having this al will have the same properties as the pointer word okay as the pointer word for example for example let's construct some examples here let me take the rules okay take the rules to the next page and then we'll construct the examples So for example number one, I can construct for you. Um, let's say Haza. Now we know Haza is a masculine singular, meaning this. And then it is followed by an al. No, uh, good point, Imran. Pointer is always proper. Pointer is always proper. Okay. It's not determined by the word it points at. Pointer is always proper. Okay. So if you have a haza and then there is an al after it, and then you say Quran, haz al Quran, Quran, haz al Quran, haz al Quran. Okay. You understand? Now, when you saw the pointer first, say, okay, haza, fine. How do I know it's a fragment or a sentence? How do I know it's a fragment or a sentence? Then you look forward and you found an al right after it attached to the word it's pointing to. Okay. Then you do the four properties. Then you do the four properties. Okay. The four properties. Let's let me 
it makes some space here so we can do four properties okay we say pointer let's start with the pointers four properties we say pointer your four properties are you are rafa because you by default rafa there is no reason for me to call you nasab or jar because there is no half of nasab before you there's no half of jar before you, you there's no reason for me to call you jar so you're rafa okay and your singular i know your singular pointer and your masculine pointer and you're always proper okay that's what i know from my understanding of the pointers okay that's what i know okay. Then I go and do the four properties of Al-Quran. I see Al-Quran nu as Rafa. This is clearly a Rafa for me. Okay? Al-Quran is clearly a Rafa for me. And then it is singular, it is masculine, and it is also proper. Four properties match. I'm just... Is an easier way to do it, okay? It's an easier way is that I just do it in front of them. Okay. I'll do it in front of them. Okay. This is at the, as the pointer. Oh my God, sometimes it's so annoying, so annoying, and I cannot do it. Okay. okay, let's live with this. Okay. Let's live with this for now. Okay. Quran has the same four properties. Haza and Al Quran has the same four properties. And immediately, as soon as you saw the pointer, you saw a word having an Al. Okay, now this would be translated to this would be translated to this Quran. This would be translated to this Quran. This Quran. Now this is a Quran. This this Quran. Okay, it's gonna be this Quran because because this is a fragment. It's not a sentence. Okay, it's a fragment. This would mean this Quran. Let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. So let's say Hazihi. Hazihi. Al Hayati. Al Hayati. Hazihi. Al Hayati. Instead, not just Hazi, say Fi Hazihi. Fi Hazihi Al Hayati. Abdunia, let me just make it full. Abdunia. Abdunia. Fi Hazihi. Al Hayati Ad Dunya. Now look at this closely. Now look at this closely. What is the what are the four properties of Hazihi? What are the four properties of Hazihi? Let's try to do that. Let's try to do that. It's it's jar because it's after fi. Yes, there is a half of jar before it. So this pointer has to be jar, and we know. That Hazihi looks exactly the same as Rafa in the in the Nasab or Jar state as well, right? It's Jar, it's singular, it's feminine, and it's proper. Yes. Then we go and find Al Hayatihi. We found a word having an Al on it, Al on it. So there's a highly likely chance that it is a pointer fragment, right? 
So we go and do the four properties of this word. We go and do the four properties of this word. So the four properties of this word. Al-Hayati is Jar. I can see that. It's singular. I can see that. Okay. It's feminine because there's a Ta Marbuta. Right. I can see that. And it's proper because it has an Al. Because it has an Al. So Hazihil Hayati is going to be a pointer fragment. It's going to be a pointer fragment. Okay. Okay. On the contrary, on the contrary, constructing a sentence, constructing a sentence is very simple. When you construct a sentence with a with with a pointer, you just don't have an al after the pointer. Okay? You just don't have an al after the pointer. If I say if I say ha has al has instead of saying has al Quranu, I say haza haza. Quran as a Quran I say this okay if I say this this would not mean this Quran this is not a fragment this is a sentence this is a sentence this is a sentence and this sentence means this is a Quran Uh, this is Quran. Okay, this is not a fragment because there's no al after the haza. There's no al after the haza. So the pointers must be followed by an al in order to for the fragment to be formed. Okay, so two rules that we did: the pointer must be followed by an al, and the four properties must match. Okay, four properties must match. Okay. Any questions so far? Anything bothering? Great, excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'll move to your notes on page number page number thirty one. Page number thirty one. This is written here in your notes. All of this is written here in your notes. So using pointers to make a fragment, the pointer must be followed by immediately must be followed immediately by an al the, of the pointer which is ism ishara and the pointed ad which is called musharun ilay i didn't do, just to keep things simple they must match okay that's what we have done and this is the fragment part that's how you make pointer fragments pointer followed by an al and the four properties match then we have sentences. To make a sentence and not have an L. The pointers should not have an L to make a sentence. Okay, and there are a few examples given here. Haz al bayti is a pointer fragment because there is a al after haza. Hazihil hayati we have done just now, and it has an al after it, and the four properties also match. Okay. Haz al Quranu is also a pointer fragment because the four properties match and I'll after it okay tilka hududu now is this a sentence or a or a fragment tilka hududu is this a point a strike sentence or a fragment what do you think 
it's written in notes so i'm still asking so it's a sentence right because there's no al there's no al exactly there's no al so there's no al so therefore it's a sentence not a fragment okay ulaika ashabu ulaika ashabu it's a sentence no al sentence okay hazihi nakatun hazihi nakatun you see the gender of this ism defines which pointer is used you see that gender of the ism it points to defines which pointer is used so if the pointer is feminine there's a reason because what it is pointing to is feminine in this case istamar buta makes it hazihi right in the case of tilka hududu hududu means boundaries boundaries it's a plural it's a broken plural it has to be singular feminine it has to be singular feminine right so because it's singular feminine therefore the singular feminine is used tilka not zalika okay tilka singular feminine you see that don't forget this this is an important point it's an important point okay so in english in english you what what's happening here look at the translation let me give you this insight this is important insight the tilka normally in normal cases would be translated to that for feminine that for feminine okay because those is ulaika okay or tanika okay it's not tilka tilka is that okay tilka is that and hududu because hududu is broken plural it has to be singular feminine therefore we had to use tilka but the translation translates tilka as what look at this those the translation translates it as those although the real meaning is that the reason is if you literally translate arabic into english it will not make sense okay if you say that are the boundaries it will not make sense so you have to translate in a way that it makes sense although tilka means that the translation still says those because in english you require a plural pointer to point to a plural ism it's a plural okay that's the rule of the english language you're doing translation in english language so you you're going to use the rules of the english language right you won't you cannot use the use of the Ar rules of the arabic language it won't make sense so translations are always interpretations translation is not a quran quran is only in arabic all the translations are interpretations right that's why you may find these inconsistencies where you find a pointer that means that or but in in the translation it is pointed translated as those which may confuse you and the reason is the rules of english does not allow you to translate literally from arabic to english okay so you use what makes sense you translate what makes sense okay just keep that in mind so let's do one or two quick exercise examples and then i'll leave you uh, for the week to complete this at home inshallah and in the next class we'll do a bit more okay so let me jump on to the number one so what you have to do you have to find if this is sentence or a fragment <clears throat> if this is sentence or a fragment but i would really encourage you not just to find the sentence or a fragment but also see if you find other other uh, fragments in in these scripts that that are given to you okay so you keep on practicing on all of all of those things inshallah so what do you think is it a sentence or a fragment bihaz al hadisi there are three words correct one is b haza is two al hadisi is three okay and there are two fragments perfect yes this is the harf of jar fragment bihaza 
and al hadisi and haza is the pointer fragment okay? pointer fragment perfect perfect okay? and th that's why the al hadisi is also jar because haza is jar because of the ba right so let's see if there's any specific one we could do Okay, let's do let's do number twelve quickly. Let's do number twelve. What's happening here? Do we have any fragment here? Pointer fragment operating or or anything? Is this a pointer fragment or a sentence? In Nahazal Qurana. Inna hazal Qur'ana. Inna hazal Qur'ana. Three words, correct. Three words, one and two, three. One, two, three. That's correct. How many fragments are operating here? How many fragments? Yes, that's right. So in nine haza are harf of nasab. This is harf of nasab. And anything else? Anything else? So there is another one. There is another one which is Hazal Qurana. Hazal Qurana. Hazal Qurana is a pointer fragment. Right? Is a point. This this yellow one is a pointer fragment. Pointer fragment. Okay. Hazal Qurana because you found Haza and there is an al after it. There is an al after it, and the four properties match. Do the four properties match? Shall we do the four properties? Haza, let's 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 do the four properties of Haza quickly. This is Nasab because it's part of the half of Nasab fragment. It's singular, it's masculine, and it's proper. Okay. Al Qurana, Al Qurana is Nasab. It's singular, it's masculine, and it's proper. Okay. The four properties match. The question is, why is Qur'ana Nasab? Why is Qur'ana Nasab? The reason Qur'ana is Nasab is because Haza is Nasab. And why is Haza Nasab? Because it is in the Harf of Nasab fragment. It is part of the Harf of Nasab fragment. So Nasab gets transferred from Inna into Haza and Haza to Al-Qur'ana. Okay. You see the chain? Good. Excellent. So I won't solve all of this now. Just go home and solve it. What do we, what do we have next? Do you have anything? Yeah, okay. So just solve this exercise, inshallah. Uh, we're very close. We're very close to, inshallah, completing all the fragments. And we will start the ism-based sentences. And then we'll have the study of fail, which is going to kickstart. So we are very, very, very advanced, inshallah. So uh, just, just do your best to, inshallah, um, um, do this exercise at home to do your best. Inshallah, you're doing great. Um, so don't don't lose it. Just spend some time this week to complete this exercise. And inshallah, come back again fresh and shiny. So we'll we'll start it again and do the revision. And uh, for those who watch recordings, please do make sure that you do the exercises and also um, complete the exercise and watch the lectures that you may have missed. Um, inshallah, um, Jazakallah for joining again and for all the commitment you show. May Allah bless you uh, for all of And inshallah, I'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.